Hello everyone and welcome to my vlog on Monday the 16th of December which happens to be the day of my Oxford interview. So I'm, um, it's just in the morning for my first interview at 9.20 and I thought I might as well show you my room that I've been staying in at Trinity. And I'm trying to keep my voice down because obviously the walls are really thin and I don't want everyone hearing me talking to myself but I'll just show you my room. There's the bed which was very uncomfortable. Desk fridge which was really noisy through the night so I had to turn it off and here's um, my sink it's all the amenities you would ever need and the view out the window is really nice I'm in room 1821 if that means anything to anyone but that's a really nice quad I don't know if that's quad there's a nice little pond there and two fat pigeons Let's see if I can get that yeah, I've got two interviews, one here at Trinity College and my second one at Teddy Hall. Um, so I'll catch up with you guys after my first one and hopefully I won't be in tears. I'm not going to lie, I am pretty nervous, but then I suppose anyone would be for this sort of thing. Yeah, I was getting quite worried last night, but then I thought in the end I'm just talking to a group of people um, who are just people um, about subjects I love and they probably love it just as much or even more than me. So I think I'm just going to go the flow and hopefully it all goes well. I know this is really lame, but this is one of the main reasons why I've applied for Trinity. The beautiful lawns. As you can see, I'm no longer in Oxford. It's actually been a few weeks since my interview and I thought I'd just um, film this to sum up my Oxford interview experience. I realised I didn't actually introduce myself properly, so my name's Rebecca and I apply to study material science. As I mentioned before, I had my first interview at Trinity College, the college I had I'd applied for. The first question was why materials, and I just responded with my usual pre-prepared spiel. I don't think they actually care too much about what my response was. Next, I had quite a lot of questions on my personal statement to make sure that I fully understood all the physical principles behind um, what I had put down. Unfortunately, I wasn't as prepared as I would have liked to have been, and I did get stuck quite a lot of times about points that I had made in my personal statement. So an example of this was when one of the tutors asked me what the definition of viscosity was, because I had written about non-Newtonian fluids in my personal statement. And in fact, the night before my interview, I had written notes. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it actually there's actually a definition of viscosity up there, which is shear rate by shear stress double underlined I may add and because of the pressure of the interview I just could not think what it was. So I would advise future applicants to really make sure that they know exactly what is on their personal statement and really prepare for talking quite in depth about it to experts in um, the field you've probably written about. I did have one preset question in this interview though and it was a maths question um, so here I've drawn it out um, as you can see, it's, there's two slopes inclined at angles alpha and beta and a uniform plank um, resting between them, um, making, a, making an angle gamma. And what you needed to find out was the angles alpha, beta, gamma. All you needed to do is resolve vertically, horizontally and then take moments at one point. So I was really happy with this question as it was similar to the A-level syllabus and I had done something like it before. And my third and final question in this interview was um, also based on my personal statement. So I'd written about solar cells and the tutor asked me to explain how they work. And this is where I got quite stuck again. I knew how they worked, but I hadn't had the practice of really explaining to someone out loud. He gave me an example of a solar cell and said, what would happen if I added aluminium? Um, I doped the silicon lattice with aluminium and I just could not think how many um, valence electrons were in uh, aluminium and then he, I probably spent about 10 minutes trying to work out what the formula for aluminium oxide was and it was probably one of the most painful moments of my life because I just I don't know why I think I was mixing up ionic and covalent bonding or something and I just couldn't work out what the formula was. My second interview was quite a lot later in the day at Teddy Hall and um, the nature of the interview is also quite different. 
all the questions were quite academic and none of them were related to my personal statement. I was given a blank periodic table and the shooter simply said, try and fill in as many elements as possible. And as someone who doesn't do chemistry A2, I have not looked at a periodic table for about half a year, so I was just trying to rack my brain to see what I could remember. But what became quite apparent was that they weren't looking to see who would memorise the periodic table. Instead, they were trying to probe you to find out um, whether you can think logically and kind of work out where to place an element because of physical or chemical properties. For my next question, I was actually given this equation. So what they asked me to do was to sketch a graph um, showing how rate of diffusion differs according to the temperature and once I'd done that they then asked how I would draw a straight line graph to represent this so it's using a logarithmic scale. It just required some algebra to manipulate the equation to get what I wanted. So once I had sketched the graph um, the tutors asked me to explain why this happened, why the rate of diffusion would increase with temperature and I gave quite a rudimental explanation of what I thought was correct, which was actually completely wrong, but they helped to um, amend what I had said and gradually I came to the correct conclusion. Next, one of the tutors showed me a graph showing how different elements in iron lattices diffuse at different rates and he asked me why this was the case and I tried to con conjure up a reasonable explanation whilst he told me not to mark his graph with my pen. My final question involved explaining the material science behind everyday objects. So first the tutor gave me a drawing pin and he asked me to identify what the material was and some of the possible different manufacturing methods that they could have used to make the drawing pin. Afterwards he also gave me a carabiner, one which was, uh, I think it was steel, and the other was uh, aluminium. We went on to discuss why one would be advantageous over the other. Overall I found my interviews at times incredibly terrifying but weirdly enjoyable to just be able to talk to all these fantastic professors who know so much about their subject. I, I stayed most of the time at Trinity College and all the other fellow applicants were really friendly and it was just really nice to get to know such like-minded people. The interviews were actually only about half an hour. There was plenty of time to get to know people as well as meeting up with other people I knew who had applied for Oxford, so that was really nice. I know at some colleges the undergrads had actually organised planned activities, but all we did in Trinity was playing cards and other games. Uh, despite the fact that I was only there for one day, I managed to watch three movies because there was just so much free time. Anyway, thank you for watching my Oxford interview experience video. I apologise for the funky lighting at the moment, but the sun's gone down. I might make some more university application advice videos in the future, but we'll see. So, thank you for watching.